with Zelma and a few other people. They will all of course be linked down below as usual. I'm actually filming this a bit early because I finished the five books that I picked for March. Uh, day before yesterday I think it was. So um, yeah, it's, it's not quite April yet but I'm, I'm going to film it now and get myself some new books. So I'll just run through the five books that I had for March. Let you know what I thought of them. So the first one was a book you picked because of the cover, which was Dragon Claw. I'll insert a picture of it because I don't have it in front of me. Um, the One of the Witches of Elian books by Kate Forsyth. I really enjoyed rereading that book. It was... I remember now why I really enjoyed the whole series. So um, I probably will be looking to read the rest of the series over the course of the rest of this year as well. But yeah, it's a really good read. I really recommend it. If you like books that have dragons and witches and a bit of magic and um, stuff in it, it's an intrigue and it's just a really good fantasy story. Really enjoy it. Uh, the next one was a book from the thrift store. I read Isaac Asimov's uh, Space Ranger. Um... It's um, it's about what I expected. It was it was fine. It was kind of interesting. It's actually the first one in what ends up being a series of books that have the space ranger in them. It's how he becomes the space ranger, like the character becomes a space ranger. Um, yeah, and <laughs> there is a, a note in the front of it from Isaac saying how he um, at the time it was written how it. Um, they didn't know the stuff that they know about Mars now. So, um, it's that, you know, suspend disbelief because he is aware of the fact that it's not scientifically accurate. So, yeah. Uh, the next book was a book that came out the year you were born. I had to kind of like fudge this one a little bit. I read uh, Harry Harrison's Technicolor Time Machine. That was the last book that I actually finished. It's an okay story, uh, interesting concept uh, about time travel and how it could potentially affect things. Um, it was an interesting read. It had some quite humorous bits in it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, the next one was a book set in Canada. I read the first book out of the Anne of Green Gable series. Really enjoyed it. Uh, realised as I was reading it, I, I probably never finished reading it as a youngster, like started reading it, never finished it. Um, quite enjoyed it. Um, it was a good read. And you know, the fact that I was, you know, a redhead and kind of a bit weird and different to other people, I connect quite a bit with Anne as a character. Uh, yeah, so that, that was a good one. Um, and the last one was a prize winner, and I picked Gone with the Wind. I read the uh, version, or the, the copy that my grandmother bought for my grandfather back in 1938. Uh, it's still a good story. It's a very long book. There's, it's very involved. Um, but if you have any interest whatsoever in the American Civil War, it's a good one to read because there's a lot about the American Civil War in it and um, a lot from the Confederate side of the war rather than from the uh, Yankee side of the war. And uh, uh, particularly in the current climate in America, um, I think maybe a, a lot of Americans should actually like pay attention to what was actually going on um, back then and the that maybe the way that they thought things were, like the way that we look at it now, from the perspective now, maybe we were looking at it wrong, what was actually going on. It's just a very interesting read, um, particularly if you like history and anything about history. Um, and, you know, it's it's fairly thoroughly researched. It's, you know, it's, it's clear that the person, uh, the lady who wrote it, knew what she was writing about. Um, yeah, it's a 
it's it's a good book. It's very long. Uh, it took me. I, it's actually like when I read it as a, a youngster. It took me about a week to read it. Um, but I, I'm one of those. I read quite rapidly, and I read a lot at a time. So I will, you know, um, sometimes stay awake far too long reading. It is what it is. Okay, so uh, on to the books that I'm going to be reading this next month, however long it takes me. All of the books that I'm reading this time are uh, ebooks, and <laughs> all of them are free ebooks. Uh, so, um, yeah, I will just insert pictures of the different books. I uh, um, don't know that I have. Well, of course I do, because they're all on my phone. I will just pull up my Amazon Kindle. Um, I just use my phone. Um, I don't actually have a Kindle, I just use my phone. It's, it's alright, it's being really, really stupid at the moment. Let's go to my library. Alrighty. So, the first one I picked is number 16. It's um, a book you were supposed to read in school but didn't. Uh, I read all the books I was supposed to read in school, plus a lot of books I wasn't meant to read and didn't need to read <laughs> because I'm j I, I was that kid. I spent a lot of time with my head in books, so yeah. Um, so what I decided to read was Pygmalion. Obviously Pygmalion is the play that was written which became My Fair Lady. Um, which was a play by George Bernard Shaw, which was named after a Greek myth uh, mythological character. Um, most people know what the story is. It's about a professor who uh, finds a Cockney street girl and turns her into a lady, effectively. Uh, yeah. So um, that is the first one that I am going to read. The next number I drew was 82, a book with bad reviews. It's actually pretty hard to find books with bad reviews because, like, particularly on uh, Kindle's Amazon or Amazon's Kindle store, they list them from the most popular normally. Um, yeah, so that one was a little bit harder. I pulled one out. Um, the book that I'm going to read is called uh, Romance Do or Die, A New Paranormal, Paranormal Romance um, Surreal Blue Rogue Agent series, first book by E.R. Bain. Uh, <laughs> it, it really... I don't know what's happened to it. I thought I'd actually... Got it. Uh, it, re <laughs> it really doesn't have very good reviews. Uh, mainly that it is very confusing. People felt like they were missing stuff. Uh, it jumps all around all over the place. Uh, so it, it should be. It, I'm expecting it to be terrible. Quite honestly, I'm expecting it to be an absolutely terrible book. And I suppose if you go into it uh, expecting it to be a terrible book, then it probably will be. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's apparently not a very good story whatsoever. Uh, the next one was one that was already in my, um, sitting in my library. I have lots of books in my library that I haven't actually read yet, so I tend to go through them first before I um, get new books for this. So the next one was 29, a book with a one-word title. And I picked Damocles by SG Reading, which is a book that I have had in my um, on my Kindle for absolutely ages. Um, I think it was a free one way back when I first um, got my thing. Um, and basically, it's a science fiction story about... A linguist in deep space. Um, yeah. 
so it's obviously a lot more to it. But that that's the 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 very short synopsis is linguist in deep space where there's other humanoids. Um, and instead of being the ones being invaded, they are the invaders type of situation. Uh, yeah, so that should be interesting. Uh, do, re do like a good science fiction. Um, the next one I picked is number 54, which was a book by a local author. And I kind of like looked around and wasn't really sure. And then I was, you know, searching for free books because I'm cheapskate. And I came across a book called, um, I searched for uh, Australian Free, and I came across a book called Beach Apples by a woman called Vera Loy. Um, it turns out it's a collection of short stories, contemporary mystery, science fiction, that all have an Australian flavour, and the woman who actually wrote it lives in Adelaide, which is the capital city of the state that I live in, and not too far away from here, so I class her as a local author. So I thought I would uh, read her short stories, um, yeah, which will be interesting. I, I will be interested to, because um, there's some stuff about the Adelaide Hills, which is where I live, so it will be interesting to see what she has to say. And the last one is 56, which is a book set in the 1700s which is pre-Regency, so it's actually really easy to find Regency novels. It's harder to find ones that come before that period. But I did find one that comes from a series. Um, this is actually the second book in, a ser in the series, but it's right. Um, it's called The Pirate Bride, Daughters of the Mayflower. Um, and it is set in 1725. So that should be uh, interesting. It's uh, about a privateer and an heiress trying to find lost treasure. It's obviously a romance as well. Yeah. Uh, so those are the books that I am going to be reading. Um, see how long that takes me. Most of these don't seem to be particularly long, so I'm not expecting them to take me that long. So I probably... I expect to be back before the end of April with another one. So, yeah, so that is my update for Project Booksmarts. Don't forget to check everybody else out down below. If you want to subscribe, click the button down there. Click the little bell if you want to get notifications. Leave me a thumbs up if you like project and book type of videos. And leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments. And I'll see you in my next video. See ya.